you've ever gone to the doctor, a lot of times when you're getting your blood work taken, they want you to fast beforehand. And that's so they can get a baseline of what your blood um, has in it prior to eating. Sort of what we need to do with our soil is something similar. We're looking for that baseline reading to understand the nutrients that are in our soil. And after coming out of a winter, when we haven't done a lot with our garden space and put any inputs into it, it's a great time to sort of find out what nutrients are in our soil right now. So as you come out of winter and before you put that spring fertilizer down, it's important to go ahead and take a good soil sample. Now today we're going to show you how to do it. It's a pretty straightforward process, but it's one that you want to do uh, accurately, carefully, in order to get the best results from that soil test. Now a soil test is a chemical analysis that gives you the nutrients that are available to that plant. Oftentimes you just need a routine soil uh, test, which means that it'll give you the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and also the pH of your soil. Before you get started though, you want to identify the different locations that you want to pull cores from in order to get a good sample. You want to test different garden spaces, which have been maintained differently, as different samples. For instance, if you have a lawn area that you maintain as a lawn, you might fertilize it and maintain it differently than you do your vegetable garden. Or you might maintain your vegetable garden separately than what you maintain your ornamental landscape. We also have another area in our vegetable fruit garden where we grow blueberries. Blueberries are known to like a lower pH, and so we have amended that soil differently than the rest of the vegetable garden. So these areas would be important to sample differently in order to identify the nutrients that is available in that soil. So today we're going to start here in our lawn. Um, and what you want to do in any area, regardless of the space, is to take about 15 to 20 cores. Now if you go to your extension office, they likely have a soil probe that you can get. They come in different sizes and different uh, styles. Um, there's even a sweatless, so depending on when you're doing this and how hard your soil is, it might take a little exertion, but they do have sweatless ones that you can hook up to your uh, drill and simply drill those cores out. Now the important thing is, is for a regular routine lawn and garden sample, you're going to want to take a six inch profile. So what we're going to do is we're going to you can see this probe has already been marked with six inches with this tape here because we utilize it so often. So we're just going to push this down six inches into the soil, twist that probe, and then pull up our sample. So there you see we have our six inch core. Now we're going to want to take about 20 of these cores throughout this whole entire space. So depending on your soil, you can push that back out and then drop that into a bucket. Now you want to make sure your bucket is clean and doesn't have any debris in it so that you're not accidentally adding organic matter that's not necessarily in your soil or any other foreign objects. So you want to make sure that sample is clean as you put it in there. Now if you don't have a soil probe, you can also use a hand trowel. A lot of them are marked with measurements. Again though, you want to make sure you get that whole um, zero to six inch soil profile because that is how the lab is calibrated in order to measure the nutrients in your soil. So once you've collected your 20 cores, that's going to give us a good average sampling for this particular lawn area. So you would do the same thing in any other area that you wanted to test separately as it's been maintained separately. So at this point you can see we've got our cores in here because the soil is fairly moist they have kind of stayed in a, a clump and we're going to remove any sort of debris that we might find in here. Again we're soil sampling not necessarily sampling for organic matter or any of this tissue. So we want to remove anything if there's leaf debris or anything like that mulch you want to make sure to remove that. Once you have your 20 samples or cores kind of blended together, then we're going to go ahead and take a sample of that and put that in one of our sampling bags. 
So basically, we've got a representation of 20 different areas in this particular lawn that we've pulled cores from. If you had only pulled three cores, again, that's just going to give you a very sort of inaccurate look of what your lawn is doing. So the more cores, the better. Usually 15 to 20 cores is going to give you the most accurate representation of your garden area. If you, you can pick up these um, bags at your extension office when you're picking up a soil probe, but if you don't have them, um, they are free. If you don't have one, you can just use a clean sandwich baggie or something like that. But that's about the volume that you want to take into your extension office um, to give them to test one sample. Now, again, you want to make sure it is a clean baggie and you never want to put your soil in the baggie and then put it in this because this is actually going to go through the lab process and um, they don't want to have to take it out of that baggie. So make sure that you just put your sample straight into this bag. Um, if you do take it into the extension office in a baggie or some other container, then they will transfer it into one of these bags to go to the lab. Now, if this was really, really wet, you would want to lay it out and sort of dry it, perhaps put it on some uh, newsprint or something like that and allow it to bake a little bit in the sun before you put it in here. You don't want necessarily mud going in here. So after you've gotten your sample collected and tied up in a bag, you want to make sure to label that. And so I like to just take a marker and write on the back of the card what area that was taken from. Now when we get to the extension office, they're going to put some coating on there that you'll need to identify with. Um, but for initially, while you're taking samples from one area versus the other area, go ahead and label on the back of your tag just that area that you're taking that sample from. Now we're taking a routine test and that's the usual test that most homeowners will want is just the routine sample. Um, and that'll give you your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium as well as your pH levels. So that's the basic information that you need. If for any reason you want the micronutrients or the organic matter or the texture, salinity, there's some other tests that they can run on that, but those are gonna come at an additional fee. The routine sample just costs $10. And for any other tests, you can check the website for more information about that pricing. So we've got our lawn checked, we've got our routine checked. And so at this point, we're headed off to the extension office. Um, I will say though, that you don't necessarily need to get this sample to the extension office right away. Um, it's not like that you have to get it there within 24 hours or anything that this sample is gonna go bad. You've got time. It's just a matter of once it gets mailed to the lab, it'll take about seven to 10 days for you to get your results back. So keep that in mind as we head into the spring season. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.